Well, good morning, Chapel Hill. It's time for another devotional. I hope you have your coffee with you. We've got our Bibles. We're ready to look at a passage of Scripture this morning together. To, next couple of mornings, I wanted to talk about two uh, stories that fall back to back uh, in the Gospel of Luke. And um, in these two stories, we find a contrast um, that I think affects us uh, very deeply. And, and uh, it has a lot to do with the way that we respond to God, how we see God, how we see Jesus, and how we think he sees us. So uh, we'll look at these two passages of scripture. Um, before we do that, um, I wanted to pray, but before I pray, I wanted to announce something to you. Um, wanted to make sh sure you knew that we are have we are putting our uh, devotionals, the daily breads, and uh, uh, the devotional rack, we're gonna put that outside of the church so that people can drive by to pick up their daily breads. They can get the large version or the smaller version. Um, but we know that you'd probably want to get your daily bread if, you, if you're used to getting that. So that'll be on the outside of the church uh, as you drive through the uh, kind of the drive through place there. Um, you can see that and, and pick that up. Uh, if you would like it delivered to your house, we would be glad to do that as well. We've got some people who are willing to do that. You can call me or, or email me. Uh, my cell phone is 859-333-6919. Uh, my email is michael.snyder721 uh, at gmail.com. Uh, either of those, uh, you, can, you can contact me. Um, let's pray before we go into the Word together. Father, I pray your blessings on this word that we receive from you. We ask you to give us insights. And uh, as always, we're asking your word to penetrate uh, our lives and our situations and give us the grace that we need from day to day. In Jesus' name, amen. So that this morning, I wanted to start with a, the passage that we kind of ended with the last series that I did with Simon Peter. Um, it was basically the day that Jesus called uh, Simon Peter to be a fisher of men, and we remember that that passage. Uh, Jesus uh, is uh, coming into uh, along, uh, preaching to this crowd, and he sees these boats on the uh, water's edge, and he gets into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon Peter, and uh, he preaches this sermon, and then he sets out. He says, P Peter set out into deep water, and so Simon Peter um, does what he says, even though he doesn't believe he's going to catch any fish. He goes out into the deep with, with Jesus, and they cast their nets one more time. Um, and the Bible says, starting in, in Luke chapter 5, uh, starting in verse 6 there, um, when they had done so, when they cast their nets, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. And they signaled for their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled their boats, uh, <clears throat> both boats, so full that they began to sink. Um, and this is a, an incredible miracle to a fisherman who's been fishing all night long and hasn't caught anything. And now all of a sudden, Jesus says, try it one more time, see what happens. And he casts the net and the nets begin to break. The boats begin to sink because God's provision, God's awesome provision, um, is just, just uh, saturates the life of Simon Peter. And Simon Peter responds, and this is kind of what I want to zone in on here, Simon, Simon res, Peter's response to realizing that Jesus is not just a good preacher, but he is, he is a, he's a miracle worker, and I believe he saw something of divinity in Jesus at this point. And so Simon Peter saw this, and it says he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he, and all, for he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon, Simon's, Peter, Simon's uh, partners. So Simon Peter sees this miracle and he falls down at the knees of Jesus. And, and, and the literal translation is he grabs hold of the knees of Jesus and he tells him to go away. And he says, go away from me. And then he says, the reason I want you to go away from me, Lord, is because I'm a sinner. And as he does this, as he says this, he's ex he expresses something about his, his uh, understanding of Jesus that a lot of times I think we also have in our understanding of Jesus. And that is that our problems are too big. If Jesus knew the extent of our problems, he wouldn't even mess with us. Our problems are too big. 
And at that moment, Simon Peter became the sinner whose Savior was too small, too small <clears throat> to handle his situation. Um, some of us, I think, can relate to that, and we get in these periods of time when we think that our problems are too big, our lives are too messed up, um, our sins are too great for Jesus to handle. Uh, there's a lot of people out there who are waiting until they get their lives in order before they ask Jesus to come into their hearts. Maybe some of you who are watching this on the internet are, are, have been struggling with this. You feel guilty and you feel overwhelmed with guilt. You, you think, well, there are sinners out there, but then there's my sin. My sin is greater than all their sins. I do bad things. I am a nasty person. Why would God even want to be around me. So you say with Simon Peter, go away. You don't want to be around me. I'll try, if, once I clean up, then I'll come get you. But right now, I'm, I'm, my problems are too big for you to handle. Well, when, when we say that our sins are too great for the Savior, for Jesus, um, we're basically saying that Jesus is too small. His sacrifice for the world for the sins of the world is, is too small. And in the Bible, and in, in church history, we call that heresy because the Bible insists that the Lamb of God was able to take away the sins of the world. And I'm not sure how bad you think you are. Uh, I don't know where what you've done or how many times you've done it. But the truth of the matter is that your sins are, are a, a drop in an ocean of forgiveness. And that's the reality. God's forgiveness overwhelms anything you could ever do. God is a big God. Jesus is a big Savior. And there's no uh, fear involved in coming to him. Now, th th this is reflected in the, in the response of Jesus when, Je when Simon Peter says, go away, I'm, just, I'm too big if you only knew me. Then in, in uh, uh, the next verse, uh, Jesus says to Simon, verse 10, Second half of verse 10, he says to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So they pulled their boats up on shore and left everything and followed him. In other words, there was the call to Simon Peter, the sinner who thought he was too big. His problems were too big for too small a savior. And this, this savior says to him, I can handle it. I can handle your sins. I am the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. I can forgive you, and I can use you. And I believe in a real special and significant way that is his call to us, even us who are sharing this together. If you're seeing this for the first time, you may be seeing this months after we recorded it. But the God who is big enough is in your room right now, and he's watching and seeing what you're watching and he's saying to you i'm big enough to take care of all your problems don't wait until you clean up to come to me come to me now i can handle it i can forgive you and i can use you let's pray father i pray for your blessings on us as we meditate on this passage of scripture we know that a lot of times we are in the same boat with simon peter as we look at you and we look at ourselves and we say, you need to go away. I'm, I'm too big a project. I'm too, there are too many mess, my, my life is just too messed up for you. Why don't you just give up on me? Many of us have prayed those prayers of, of de desperation, those prayers of despair. And yet today we see this truth that you come to us and you offer us this grace and this salvation I pray that every one of us may respond to it and say yes, to leave what we have, to leave our baggage behind, and to come and follow you. This is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you, Chapel Hill. We'll see you uh, tomorrow.